Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that is how to set up and personalize your chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. The chart of accounts is kind of like the backbone of QuickBooks Online. Every single category is in there, and that is what gives structure to all the reports that you pull for a business. I honestly really love just thinking through the chart of accounts and getting it really organized in a way that makes sense for the business. So we'll start out going inside my computer and I'll give you a tour of what the chart of accounts is and how to work with it. Okay, so here we are in the QuickBooks Online sample company, and I'm just gonna go to a report really quick to help you understand the outcome of what is going on in the chart of accounts. So I just went to reports, and then I'm just gonna pull a profit and loss standard report. So it's this year to date. I'm just gonna collapse them just to make it even simpler. So a profit and loss shows the income, so how much money the business is making, along with cost of goods sold as part of that, and then expenses. So you can see if I open up this expenses and uncollapse it a little bit, it has a whole bunch of different expense accounts. So it has meals and entertainment. This phrase, this category right here is one of the things on the chart of accounts. Same with office expenses and rent. And you can click into any of these to see what is contained in that account. Usually there's more than one thing. In the sample company, there's just one thing for $900 in rent or lease. So, and then you can also see that these little carrots here are sub accounts. So job expenses is the bigger category and then it has a sub account of job materials. So we will look at that in the chart of accounts as well. So we're just looking at two different types of accounts in this report. So one of the categories, one of the accounts I should say is income and the other one is expenses and income actually has multiple things under it as well. If you look at a different report, like a balance sheet, you will see other things. You'll see assets and liabilities and equity in that. But for now, just to keep it simple, let's keep in mind income and expenses. So now if I go to transactions and chart of accounts, I can see everything that is in the chart of accounts. So these are all those different accounts that are making up our reports. So we have the name of the account first and then the account type. The account type is really important. That was what I was mentioning before. So in here, we're gonna find the income and expenses. But first of all, you can see we have bank accounts, we have assets, we have credit card accounts, we have liabilities. And later in the video, I'll go through all these different account types. But for right now, let's just focus on income. So see, these are all the income accounts that we saw in the profit and loss. And if you scroll down a little more, you'll see all the expense accounts. I wanna make sure it's clear that I did not create this chart of accounts from scratch. So when you first start your QuickBooks file, it'll ask you what industry it is. And then it will give you kind of an industry specific chart of accounts. And I'm actually not totally sure how much it differs, but I know for like service-based businesses, there won't be like as much cost of goods sold and there'll be more like technology items. But most of these things just come kind of standard and then you can customize it a ton. And these are all totally customizable. Like I said, these fed in when I started this QuickBooks account, but if instead of maintenance and repair, if you wanted to change it to something else, you can just get this little carrot here and then say edit. And then maybe you just want to call it repairs. And then you would just save it, which it's not letting me do right now. And then that would be called something different. And then in there, you can also create a sub account if you'd like. So right here, they have this set up as maintenance and repair is the main account. And then they have different types of repairs under it. So they have building repairs, computer and equipment. So if you didn't want that to be a sub account, or if you wanted to change that somehow, this is how you do it. So you could make it a sub account of something else if you want travel meals, maybe, which doesn't really make sense. Or if you just wanted it to be a main account, then you could just uncheck this button and then it would not be a sub account anymore. And often there is a balance on how many accounts and how many sub accounts to create. So for example, this one, they have legal and professional fees and then they have three different things under it. So they have accounting, bookkeeper, and a lawyer. So honestly, if it was me, I'd probably not have these sub accounts and just keep them all under one heading. So the accountant, maybe you only pay once a year, the lawyer you pay every two years if you need it, and a bookkeeper you may pay more often. But in general, there's not gonna be so many transactions transactions in here that you really need to separate it out so much. If you want to know exactly how much you spent on your one bookkeeper, you could pull a report by vendor. Same with any of these. So every client's going to be a little bit different, but I do think people tend to want too many categories. So I would recommend to keep it simple. One other thing I just want to quickly show you while I'm here is if you want to batch edit, just click that little button and then you can edit these all at once. So you can say insurance company and then you can say equipment rental for Joe and then just save it and then those will all save in there. So if you wanna create a new account within the chart of accounts, you definitely can. You just hit this new account button here and you can name it like Morgan's account and I'll make the account type an expense. 
and then you can choose a detail type. Let me know in the comments how you choose the detail type. In my experience, it's not super important because it doesn't show up on the reporting as much. I believe it's to help during tax time, but I kind of just try to choose a general one that seems like it would work. So maybe Morgan's account is a repair account. And then you can make a description if you want. Usually I just skip that. All right, then you can save that and then you're able to use that account or that category when you're categorizing things. So I also wanted to show you another way that you can create a new account that is actually how I use this as a bookkeeper more often. So I spend a lot of time in the bank transactions area. So you can see, you can either find it right here. It's also at the top menu up there. So usually I'm in here. This is where all the transactions feed in from the bank and then they're waiting for me here as the bookkeeper. So if I am categorizing this, let's Let's not do a deposit. Let's do a, let's do this expense. Okay. So my client spent $1,200 on something. And so they spent it at A1 rental. Let's see if A1 rental is in here. It's actually not in there. So I'll just add that vendor really quick too, to show you that. So you just type in A1 rental, you can fill in more info if you want. So we have the vendor and then we have the account. So I can start typing what I'm interested in and then see what is in here already. So these are all the things contained on the chart of accounts. So right now they have equipment rental, but they don't have backhoe rental. So maybe I want a new account that is a sub account of that other rental. So let's type in backhoe rental and it's an expense and it is, let's say equipment rental, that seems right. And then let's make this actually a sub account of that other rental thing to stay organized. So it will be a sub account of equipment rental. So I saved that backhoe rental and let's add this expense in there. And this is from the same vendor. So let's make this also a backhoe rental. And then let's go see what these look like on the profit and loss statement with those two new accounts that I created. So let's go to standard reports and profit and loss. So here's our profit and loss. If we just scroll down to the expenses section, you can see equipment rental. Oh, we have that backhoe rental that I just created. And then you can click in there and you can see the two items that I just added. So there's the $800 and the $1,200. I wanted to tell you guys that I did an update to one of my classes. So these are my two classes. This one helps you start your bookkeeping business in 30 days. This one helps you get bookkeeping clients. And these are both on my website, findpoints.biz. If you click into here, the regular price for this is $375. It gives you tons and tons of great tips about how to get bookkeeping clients. So if you're looking for clients, if you're feeling discouraged, this would really help you out. And then I just added this bonus lesson, but this is based on feedback from you guys. So this lesson is all about how to get clients without social media. Cause I know a lot of people feel really overwhelmed with having to keep up with what's happening on all the different social media platforms. All right, I promised you would go through all those account types in general. And so I'm gonna talk to you from a bookkeeper's perspective about how I personally use them in my bookkeeping business for my clients. Cause I know you could just Google what a liability is and definitely do that if that's helpful. But sometimes those definitions are a little bit confusing or long winded. And so I'm just going to talk to you bookkeeper to bookkeeper about how I use these. All right. First of all, we have bank accounts. This is kind of self-explanatory, but basically all of your transactions are going to feed into the bank accounts. You're never going to be rarely going to be using that as like a category. So for like a transfer from like your checking account to your savings account, that would be the only time that you're you're kind of like using it as like a category, but a bank account, checking account, just what it sounds like, it holds all the money. Credit cards, similarly, if your client does use credit cards or more than one credit card, you wanna make sure to use this credit card account instead of a bank account, cause it will like be giving like minuses as they're spending money. And then when it pays off, it'll go back to zero. All right, next we have assets. Those are things that you own. So usually you have current assets, which is like the money that's sitting in your bank account. And I believe your inventory as well. And then fixed assets are bigger things. So like if you own, a building, if you own a car, sometimes a computer, usually it depends on the dollar amount. So definitely ask your tax preparer what they want to consider a fixed asset. Accounts payable is basically just bills that you need to pay. Liabilities are things that you owe. So like loans, it's kind of like money that's not yours, but it's going to be going to someone else. So like payroll liabilities is an example of this because it's money that has come out of your business and it's waiting to be paid in taxes. Equity is anything that the owner is contributing to the business or taking out of the business. So when the owner transfers money to their personal bank account to pay themselves, that is always equity. Cost of goods sold is like what you need 
need to deliver your product or your service. So if you're a cookie baker, flour is a cost of goods sold. And then income and expenses, you probably know what those are. Income is the money that you're making that you're getting from your clients and expenses are what you're paying. So what you pay for rent, what you pay for utilities, what you pay for software, all that stuff. And I would recommend that you go through your chart of accounts, do like a quick review every so often, maybe like once a year or depending on the client, maybe even quarterly if necessary. Then you can spot duplicate accounts or accounts that are not being used. You can make them inactive and just kind of organize things and make sure it's working as well as possible. My name is Morgan. My website is finepoints.biz and I teach an affordable class that helps you start your bookkeeping business in 30 days. So check my website or the description box and I would love it if you subscribe to my channel.